Let us begin, or again, page 26 in the English, and we're in the middle of Lamed Dalad in the all-Hebrew version. And last week we discussed that there no, none of the attributes of um, Hashem we can't, can we understand. Uh, so when it comes to Hashem's wisdom, we can never, we know Hashem's wise, but we can never, it's impossible for a creation to understand the depth of Hashem's wisdom. We know Hashem is kind, but it's impossible for a creation to understand the depth of Hashem's kindness. We can never understand that. But there's one thing that we can really understand about Hashem, and that is His oneness. So that's where we left off, so let's continue. Middle of page 26. Hashem testifies Himself. That everything that happens, everything that happens in the world, every event which happens in the world is a revelation of Hashem's oneness. Let's, let's read on. What does this mean? Like it says, Ru ata. See now, ki ani ani hu, the ain elo ki ain elohim imadi. I am one. I I am, and there's no other besides me. U mikra ze nemar achar shekal kol sivu hagagal shehayu asur mezuman liyosovi baolam. In this verse that says Hashem is one, is written after every event that happens in the world. What does this mean? Shenichol hakol b'divri hashira hahi shel hazinu in parshas hazinu, the, sec- the second to last parsha in the Torah. The all of the events which happen in world history are alluded to. And at the end of all of that, it says Hashem is one. Just like the simple reading of the verses themselves testify to. And he concludes with this verse, See that there is no power like me. So we see from the Parshas Hazinu that the end result of everything is that humankind will recognize that God is one. Now, we keep saying God is one, but we're going to learn you know, what's so hard to understand. We keep talking about God is one. One, I understand what one is. So we're, the Ramchal himself is going to bring up this fact that there's more involved in the concept that Hashem is one than what we think. And it's actually quite fundamental to human history, as we're seeing. But this idea that Hashem is one is something which is going to be recognized at the end of human history. And it says this explicitly in the prophet of Isaiah. In order that you should know and believe in me, vitavino and understand, that before me there's no, nothing and after me there's nothing. I am Hashem and there is no other Savior besides me. In other place it says, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. In other place, I am the first and I am the from the east until the, uh, the rising sun in the west, ki epes bil adai. There is nothing besides me. Ani Hashem ve'ein od. I am God and there is none besides me. Yotzer uvari choshech. I created light, created darkness. Ose shalom uvari ra. Made peace and created evil. Ani Hashem ose kol ela. I am God who makes all of this. Vihine. Lema'an yedu. It says in order that you know. Lema'an teidu v'tavino. In order that you know and understand. Because if mashma, it implies. Sherot se shenei do b'yediya v'havana. That we have to know with, under, with, with knowledge and understanding. So while the other attributes of Hashem, His wisdom, His kindness, it's impossible to know, and in fact we are prohibited from investigating certain things because anything that a human mind is impossible to, uh, from a human mind impossible to understand, we're actually prohibited to look into it because we're not going to get anywhere. But this, in addition to being the one attribute of Hashem that we can understand, Hashem's yichud, His oneness, in addition to it just being something we can understand, we're seeing that we're actually obligated to understand it. We're obligated to understand it and to know it. So the other attributes of Hashem, we're actually prohibited from looking into it to the nth degree. But when it comes to Hashem's oneness, we are obligated to investigate it. And that's what really the Ramchal is going to talk about for a good chunk of this Sefer, a good chunk of this book, is to understand what does it mean that Hashem is one. And the purpose of all the success that happens to the Jewish people, his barer yichudu le'enekol, is that the whole world should recognize that Hashem is one. All of human history, we always dive in for Mashiach, Mashiach, right? Uh, yeah, 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 right? We always want Mashiach to come, but what's the whole idea when Mashiach comes? When Mashiach comes and the temple is rebuilt, the whole world will recognize that there is one God. That's where all of human history is leading to, Right? As of now, you know, the world definitely doesn't recognize that there's only one God. People put their faith in all types of things, you know. Throughout human history, everyone thinks that this movement is going to be what saves humanity. You know, if we only get the whole world to become communist, then the whole world will be peaceful, there will be no more class warfare, and be, everything will be perfect. That will be the salvation of humanity. And obviously we see that they were wrong. 
you know, whatever it is, whatever movement it was, you know, nationalism or, uh, you know, other, other ideologies and movements, people think that that's going to be what's going to solve all of humanity's problems. But really, the only thing that's going to solve humanity's problems is when the whole world recognizes that there's one God and puts their faith in Hashem. And in addition to recognizing there's one God, we're going to see there's another aspect of this which is uh, deeper. But that's the idea. That all, but all of human history is going to that point where humanity recognizes that there's one God. And in the process, that means we have to show all the ideologies that don't work. Right? We had to go through human history to show, oh, let's try communism. Communism doesn't work. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. And eventually people are going to realize that the only thing that works and solves all of humanity's problems is a faith in Hashem and living with that recognition of Hashem. So let's continue. The Tachlis, Kol and this is the Jewish people are the vehicle that's going to bring that about as the chosen people. As we learned in Derech Hashem, Originally, Hashem wanted to, so to say, make all of humanity the chosen people, but it was only Abraham and his descendants who you know, took the bull by the horns and really stepped up to accept the Torah. So at that point in human history, it became the Jewish people, that those, the Jewish people are the vehicle for the revelation of Hashem's oneness. Okay. This concept is constantly repeated in all of the prophets. Right? These are like the verses that we always rattle off, but we never actually think about what it means. Hashem alone will be praised on that day. And that day Hashem will be king. And His name will be one, right? We say that uh, every time at the end of Aleinu. What does that mean? This is the whole concept. We, we think, you know, we rattle off Aleinu, we say it so quickly, you know, don't even think about what we're saying. But the speak whole... For what? Speak for yourself. Ooh. <laughs> I definitely speak for myself, at least. <laughs> But you may be, I know not in Manalpan it's not so common, but in other communities sometimes people daven by rote and don't always focus on, on what they're saying. But the, the last verse of Elenu is the whole, I mean the whole Elenu really is the whole goal of humanity. Where is human history going? So we constantly you know, rattle, you know, the more, usually the rule is, the more important something is, the less uh, importance we give to it and the less attention we pay to it. But the last verse of Elenu, as we're rolling up our tefillin or running out at the end of Mincha, we're saying a verse that's really the whole purpose of uh, human history. Ki az epoch, and then the, ver, the other verses continue. Ki az epoch el amim sofa brua. I will turn the world to speaking one language. Likro kulam b'shem Hashem to call to all call out in the name of Hashem. La avdo shem echad to um, to serve to serve Him in one uh, one name. V'sov davar halo zeh edusenu. In the end of this, it testifies b'chol yom tamid. We we testify every day. Shema Yisrael Hashem alkeinu Hashem echad. This is what Shema means. That Hashem is is one. Nimsa, we find Shakoma Shanim Shimiz Baralano Baemis, Maotam Shlemusa Habilti, Baalas Tahlasu Raki Hudua Shalim. So it comes out that Hashem's oneness is the only thing that we can understand. Baalas Tahlasu, Shaka Sher Nabit Bahabata Yunis, Akola Maisim Sher Nasa Tahlas Shabai Mumi. Look carefully at all of the events which happen in the world. Near a Hiluk Echo Shitsovi Vaholik, Vahaisim Nuhasa Ragila Hemis Hazos. We see that the world is going on a certain path, and that the only way. And that the, the, the pattern is that we are going to a revelation of this truth. So I know the English concludes a chapter here, but I want to go further because I think uh, there's an important point here that really ties into what we've been talking about so far. So just go a little further. Amar HaSeichel. So again, this is a conversation between the intellect and the soul. The intellect is what explains these concepts to the soul. So page 30. Amar HaSeichel says the intellect. says, Now we need to understand this concept of Yichud. Hashem's oneness. And what's um, we need we need and what it entails and like the verse commands us to put these ideas on your heart. Hashem is God. Is that we really need to understand this concept in depth. I already said. He says this is really a vast ocean of ideas, a vast sea of ideas that we need to explore to our heart's content. So again, not only, as we mentioned before, are we allowed to investigate this idea of Hashem's oneness, where we are not allowed to investigate other aspects of God, but we're actually commanded to, and we're commanded to understand it in depth. And that's what we're going to do. So says the Neshama, a question you may have been thinking about that I've been alluding to. What understanding do you need to have that Hashem is one? Hina yichud. Hashem is one. Ritzon Elaymar Shekharish Baruch Hu Echad Vada. Yichud Hashem means God is one. Ve'angelasa. There's no other God besides Him. What's so complicated here? 
Right, why do you have to have this whole, uh, you know, back and forth, I'm going to bring you verses, this whole human history is going to Yichad Hashem, and all this, it seems simple enough. Like, what's, what's the big deal here? So Amr HaSeichel says the intellect. Definitely, that's the general concept of Yichad Hashem. I'm not going to argue. That's the general concept that God is one. We still need to investigate what this means. This is what the verse says. You should know, there's nothing else besides Hashem. Okay, now we're getting a little, a little more in-depth here. Yichud Hashem doesn't just mean that Hashem is one, it means there's nothing else besides Him. Sheper Shuzal, the rabbis explain this to mean, even witchcraft. This means that God is one, there's no other power besides Him, to the point that even witchcraft doesn't have power. When we say God is one, so that doesn't, it's not enough to just understand that God is one in reality. That the only necessary existence is Him. And He's the only Creator. But we also need to understand that God is the only one with any power in the universe. And that He is the only one who controls everything. There is no other being. So when we say that there's nothing else besides God, even witchcraft, that means, right, there's such a thing called witchcraft in the world, there's such a thing called forces of evil, it gives the appearance that there's another force in the world, God forbid, that there's witchcraft, there's some evil forces that a person could use to manipulate the world. So the Ramchal, the Gemara is saying, what we believe, which is true, is that those forces of evil only have power because Hashem gives them the power to act. Now, why did God create evil? That's something we're going to discuss uh, further on. But that is definitely true, that there are forces of evil. But even those forces only exist because God gives them the power to exist. And all of the power is from Hashem. So we say, Eno Milvado, that means the only power is Hashem. So if someone comes up to me and punches me in the face, that's because Hashem wanted it to happen. If if a person believes that his boss is the one who controls his raise, or whether he's going to be financially successful, that's a lacking in Eno Milvado, that Hashem's in charge. Because anything that happens to me, I have to believe that uh, God is the only one who's in charge that has any power. Now, obviously, it's, this is a lot easier said than done, right? Because if a, you know, we can say this uh, a million times, someone might, you know, this famous, famously, the Nefesh Chaim, Chaim Velazhner says that this is a, an important segula. If a person's in times of danger, if he believes and, and contemplates Eino uh, Milvado, that there's nothing else besides God that serves as a, to re- uh, a merit to rescue him for whatever um, dangerous situation he's in. So someone, uh, someone heard about this segula uh, of Eino Milvado and asked my Rashiva, like, oh, like, uh, how many times do you have to say Eino Milvado for it to work? Like, do you have to say it seven times? Or That's not the idea. It's not like a magical thing that you just say, Eino Milvado, Eino Milvado, and it works. It's something that if you actually believe and you actually live your life according to, to it, then it works. But this is the idea of Yichar Hashem that we have to know, that even Kshafim, even these forces of evil, they have no independent power. Hashem is the only one with any power. So let's just finish this paragraph. There's nothing that can stop Hashem with Hashem's will. This is what it means, that His power is one and complete. This is what it says in the verse. I am Hashem, I... I, I uh, kill and I bring to life. There's no one else besides me that, that saves. It also says, I'm one who can challenge me. Who test in front of him. Who can tell Hashem what to do? This is, a, this is a, an important fundamental concept to our belief. I'm going to write later on. And now, uh, later on, we'll stop here, but next week the Ram Khal is going to go through different false beliefs that crept into humanity whether it's, um, you know, we were talking about the forces of evil, so some groups actually believed that there are two powers, there's a force of good, a god of good, and a god of evil. The Gemara talks about that, and we're going to talk about other false beliefs that people have, and how all of human history is going towards this uh, path when Mashiach comes that will recognize not only that God is one, but also that He is the only one who has any power, the only one who is in control. The end.